So, just as this vague term, what is everything that you could tell me about what you see up on the board? Obviously, yes, A and P, the CNS. What is everything that you can tell me about that? The brain and the spinal cord. So, we could say this is your central computer. Do we possibly know what the function of the brain actually is? And when we look at the Gifted Hands project, we can, we can describe the physical characteristics of the brain, but they go on to talk about how does it do its miraculous function. Well, whether you say through the process of how we're designed through so many years or just the way uh, I say how the man upstairs designed us, again, we can't really describe how this organ does what it does okay and with that a lot of you just do this without even thinking okay uh, we're adjusting our glasses we're uh, our baggie is empty so we just get up and go um, quietly and throw that away so what is that brain actually doing it's stimulating muscles what other types of functions do you think that the brain might do? And that's, uh, and that's a tough question. That would be even a tough question for, uh, with very little information for a college student to um, actually attempt to answer. So what do you think is something that the brain might actually do? When, let's think of, Hmm. Yeah, it, it'll tell your body tell your body how to respond to certain things, whether it's keeping you out of harm's way, or perhaps I think a, a a good indication that you can relate to because you can visualize it is why are some three point shooters better than others? Why might that be? Yeah, you might practice that, and is it believed that muscles, I don't know how it does that. Does the brain store the information for the muscle, or does the muscle actually store the information? I don't know how to answer that. Okay. So, for those of you who do play basketball, how many of you like to shoot a three-point shot? Well, how many basketball players do we have in here? See, they're all dinosaurs in here. Each and every one of them, okay, that's, you're not a dinosaur. Okay, what does that mean to you? Why did I say you're not a dinosaur like everyone else? Yeah, it's always like this. Is this, is this how they do in college too? I got a question. So if you're teaching assistant or professors in front, if you have a question, what do you do? Is it this? So, how many basketball players do we see out there? One, two, three. And that's a little better. Four. We, you already counted four. Five. Okay. So, of you, did I miss anybody? I counted five. One, two, three, four, five. Who's the sixth one? Oh, over here, number six. So, of you six, how many of you like to shoot a three-pointer? Okay. So do you think that you are good at it? I, I, it's not a question whether we think you're good at it or anybody whether you think you're good at it. Don't know? Don't know or no? We'll find out when we get there, right? So whether it's stored on ganglia, we call it, that's what, memory type of uh, muscle memory. And I think the, the, the best way to look at that is everyone's going to shoot a little differently, but I, I think the, the best way to do that is sometimes people will shoot with their elbow out like this. Where should that elbow be? 
directly underneath that ball. So when you follow through, it's following in a nice straight path. Now that's easier said, said to do than, than done. All right. So moving forward then, okay, we talk about just four main structures to the brain, okay? There's actually more that we would look at in your book and that will come later on in our discussion. So do any of these look familiar by chance? Maybe this one, okay? There, that's what I meant to point at, okay? This is probably something that's new to you, okay? This is, oh, I'm missing an E there, okay? This is something that is definitely new, and we might recognize what the cerebellum does, okay? But have you ever been told, oh, I'm theorized to be a left-brained individual? Anybody? Okay, maybe you've been told you're a right-brained individual. Maybe it's what you think you might be. But regardless, what's odd about the human body is the side of the cortex, does that control the same side of the body? So the right cortex, does that control the right side of the body? You think that would make sense, and it does, but oddly enough, for some reason, just the way we're designed and wired, it controls the opposite side of the body. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's just something that it does. Remember, we said we can't explain why this brain does the type of functions that, that it does. This probably is more so attributed to your emotions more than anything else, okay? Because later on, one of the things we're going to talk about is your four higher orders of operation that your brain does. One, it's your coordination. Two, it's how you speak with your language. Three, it's your emotions that you deal with. And num number four, it's whether it's a long or a short-term memory. Those are four of the specific functions that's on the back page that we'll get to later on. Not today, but later on in the week, perhaps. This deals with your emotions, your thalamus and your hypothalamus glands. So the anatomy of that with what you know with different types of vocabulary, the hypothalamus, would that be below the thalamus gland or above the thalamus gland in the brain? Lower? We hear above. Could it be below? So yeah, it's going to be one or the other. If someone is hyperglycemic, what would that mean to you? It means their blood sugar levels. Hyperglycemic, is that above or below a set level? It would certainly be above a set level that the brain monitors. So if someone is hypoglycemic, that would mean just the opposite, which would mean it's below the set level. So you can use that same type of logic. Hypothalamus and hypoglycemic would actually be below the thalamus gland. Okay, and we'll deal with that in um, chapter uh, 15, I believe, is the endocrine system. It's right on here. Oh, I should say chapter 11. From a different author, it used to be chapter or excuse me, a different edition, same author, it used to be the uh, chapter 9. But in this case, it's actually chapter 11. Okay, so the structure of the cerebrum, okay? There's not a lot to write on here, and you'll notice that you have your vocabulary already and a, a sheet to write on for these cranial nerves. We're going to talk about those today, and then... Uh, next week, Mr. Wagner and myself, who had discussed this, might have a better way for you to remember those. So, 
is gray matter myelinated or is it unmyelinated? Because you have gray matter and you have white matter. So what would you be led to believe? So the cerebral cortex is a thin layer of gray matter near the surface. So do you think it's myelinated or unmyelinated? It's unmyelinated, okay? Now, just because we say that really doesn't explain what it means. It's just more so a covering more than anything else because the white matter, as you can see, consists of myelinated axons. Because when something is myelinated, it's coated with what? Do we possibly remember from last chapter? Notice we're putting these together in a big unit. What is myelin? So what's its composition though? Is it sugars, is it proteins, or is it fats? Got a 33% chance. It's fats. That's right. It's a type of fat tissue that actually coats that. If I, these three of you start talking at the same time, which is fine, and I think we associated it, it's something that coats your axons and makes it bigger. Okay? So if that axon grows in size, why is that important? There's more fat tissue put on that axon, and that's important for what reason? You could say strength is the impulse. When we say strength of the impulse, it just makes it more, more efficient then. So which would make sense if we're communicating with other body parts, we want that conduction to be as smooth and as quick as possible. And that's why then white, the white matter is myelinated and the gray matter is just, just that. It's just a gray type of tissue that does a coating around the structure. It also happens on the spinal cord. You have gray matter on the outside, and the white matter is further inside that's coated with myelin. Okay? And do we remember the three parts of the spinal cord there? You have a, a pia matter, an arachidoid membrane, and a dura matter. Is which one's on the outside? The dura matter's on the outside. What would be in the middle? Think spider. Arachidoid membrane. And then the pia matter is actually on the inside. Okay. Okay. So, is this for a specific class? Mm -hmm. What class is this? So then, Mr. Dees, do you do anatomy and physiology then? Maybe. If I have Why would you do that? Would you be led to believe that what we're talking about here just might be just a little bit important? There's always a science channel. Hmm. So don't you think it would be way more beneficial to do what it is we're doing now? Sure. Good answer. Okay. Because one of the things I had thought about that um, I was talking to a fellow cross-country coach, and I think it's just as applicable in our conversation as it is to this chapter. It's just something that occurred to me within the last 10 minutes. Because I think it would be kind of fun to uh, see who is a fast typer and who is not. Okay, because we'll all have our chances. No, we just have to. Hmm. Okay, I just want to get down to here. Okay. So what might be a type of intellectual function? Well, it could be memory, okay? whether it's long or short term, because when you hear what it is that we have for dinner, we had heard spaghetti and we heard French toast. I just happen to remember that from the announcements. If you can remember that from 
earlier on, there's really no uh, clear-cut definition on the length of what your memory is, but if it's probably the same day, that's probably short-term. So long-term memory then, and our phones are not doing us a very good service for this. Okay, so for instance, who are two people that we can pick on in here? Here's one, okay? So look around amongst here. Who might you have a phone number for? Okay, so if you had to pick up somebody else's phone, whether it's Mr. Wagner's or myself, could you call Sutton? No, why not? You don't know his phone number? Well, you just said you'd call him. How is it that you're going to call him? So is it possible that smartphones aren't making us smarter? Because it used to be, believe it or not, if you wanted to call someone, you just didn't pick up a phone and look at the contacts and just even speak into your phone and just say, what, dial Sutton, call Sutton? Is that all you have to do with a smartphone? Okay. So you wouldn't dial 1605, uh, don't tell me. 335 3534. Who are we calling? Say that again. That's the school's phone number. Nobody recognize that other than over here? <laughs> okay. So then, on, so we picked on the guys. So, who would you call? No, but let's say you had to call someone, some of your friends in here. You, you wouldn't know how to call them. Because, it, and I think, it's not that it's bad. We're all guilty of doing that. I mean, myself included. We don't have to remember things anymore. So is that good or bad? I don't have an answer for that. Okay? So you know Ann, Anna's phone number. Does she know yours? No? So is that a sign of friendship then? So you're a better friend than what she... Could be, maybe, maybe not. Okay. So, what might be an example of a sensory function? Well, you got five of them. What might it be? Smell. Smell? Touch. Touch. Taste. 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 We said that already. Didn't we? Okay, and sometimes they... Okay, so, so that's five. Some of them take more, uh, let's say, neurons than others because we have special senses and we have general senses. That's broken down later on in, in your uh, textbook, and we'll talk about that at a, at a later time. But one of the things that I want to do for now, so we had a student volunteer. Thank you, Presley, or your good friend over here. I want you to take your vocab sheet. Bring that up here, and I want you to look at your paper and type out a definition with, without looking at the keyboard. Do the best you can. Okay? We'll even do this. Okay. So we just covered her piece of paper. <laughs> Well, don't look at the underneath the paper. Okay, let's get your fingers on the home row keys now.
just keep right on going. Don't even if it's if it's a mistake that don't worry about it. Do another one. That one was short. That darn piece of paper is, is awful, isn't it? <laughs> Have you had to do this in a typing class here? It, you covered up your hands and you had to type? Okay, so you get to look around. Who do you want to pick on? Okay, grab your vocab sheet and come on up here. Which is, uh, yeah, that's all right. Okay, get your fingers on the home row keys. Okay. Go ahead. Oops, just a moment. Hit oh. enter. Well, not backspace. I said enter. Oh. Okay. Ready? Nope. All right. Okay. Ready. Knock it out. Okay. Well. Well, just. Just type. We're not worried about underlines, capitalize. It'll just do it on its own. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Okay, good enough. That was one term. Who are you going to pick on? Okay. Bring your vocab sheet. So you're not doing dura or spinal and fissure. Okay. Find the home row keys. Okay. Knock it out. Oh, no, keep going. Well, now, see, now we know your fingers on the home row keys. Does it? Okay, go ahead and hit enter. Do you want to pick? That's good. Do you want to pick on anybody else? So what about if you have to type and listen at the same time? So someone want to tell me a definition. Give me a term and just start saying it. Oops, I hit enter. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. wasn't right. And how did we do? Well, not terrible. It was autocorrect doing some of that. Okay, we can do better. One more.
One more. Oops, I didn't do that right, did I? Okay, so the point behind this is, is you have these general and special senses. So of those, typing, what would you guess that is? Is that a general or a special sense? You, and you haven't been taught that yet, so don't feel bad if you get it wrong. It's not a special sense. It's a general one because it's dealing with muscular action. It's when we deal with special senses like sight and hearing is where those are what we would consider your uh, special senses. So then the last thing that we want to do is, uh, say, work on uh, my white remote. Work on your cranial nerves. And you can decipher whether it's one, if this works for you. It, it just gets to be a point where I don't use these sayings anymore. So you have to let me know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay? So what do we got? Olfactory. So then we got optic. My point is, is, if I can do this, I, maybe it's not a general way of looking at it. If I can do it, anybody could. I, I don't know if that's a good way of looking at things, but sometimes it's just experience more than anything else. Then, this is one of the things I like to do. I, I know that one's number 10. Let's see here. And I know this one, accessory. And then I think this is hypoglossal, which means this one's glossal pharyngeal. So, whether you have a saying, I, I sometimes stumble over this. It was called Old Olympic, on Old Olympic Tower Tips, a uh, Finn viewed Germans uh, viewing another hip or something like that. Okay, but now I just associate some of these. The first five are pretty simple for me, even the first seven. Uh, I know that this one's the eighth. I know the Vegas is the tenth. So sometimes when you break them up into categories, it's easier to fill in the gaps. Okay. So again, that same uh, uh, reasoning or that paper or those blanks are on the back side of your uh, handout. We didn't get to the book today like I thought we would. And then what page is that? Five something? 420. 420. Oh, it tells you that. I wasn't sure whether that was the right page number. 427 is where you find these cranial nerves. Even though they attach to the brain, 423, okay. Even though they attach to the brain, these are part of the peripheral nervous system. You might say, well, if it's attaching to the brain, that's gotta be central nervous system. No, it's part of the peripheral nervous system. Okay, we'll get more into some of their functions uh, later on. So that's all we have. We'll catch up to you next time.